How's it going everyone? My name is Case and in this episode of Dude I Love or Hate My New Ride, we're taking a look at this 2014 Subaru Crosstrek with tons of modifications. Now I have Beckett here who bought this car a couple years ago and has been building it out ever since and there's a lot to go through, so let's check it out. So what was it that drew you to the Crosstrek in particular when you were shopping cars? So I was 15 when I started looking at this car, so really it was my parents who were looking at it for me. Right. And realistically they wanted reliability and good gas mileage and storage space. So they didn't want me getting a Mustang or something powerful <laughs> um, or a gas guzzler. They wanted something small that was going to be a perfect daily driver for getting me through high school and through college and into my earlier you know, years of adult life. Uh, so realistically, this thing was perfect for him. They liked that I had a four cylinder. I wasn't going to kill myself racing it. Right. Um, and it gets, I can't remember the exact numbers, but like 22 city, like low 30s on the on the highway. This one doesn't get that anymore because I've put bigger wheels and, you know, a Big giant roof sail rack, yeah. on, route, on the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, no, it's, just a, it's a great car all around underpowered but like literally everything else on it is just perfect so what were some of the first modifications that you started to do very first thing i did to the car was going to be the spoiler on the back okay just because i'd seen them on a couple others and it's nothing too serious relatively easy to put on just make it look a little um, bit spoiler. yeah and you know get that plus five horsepower oh really. yeah 100 percent. um but no just for the looks i did that first um, and then obviously a couple cheesy like never summer stickers and you know whatnot. Yeah, so just, um, just to personalize it a little bit. And then in terms of wheels, tires, suspension, so first thing, how much has it lifted and how difficult was it to find a suspension lift for this car? Um, so it's lifted two inches. It's got one inch um, raising springs that are slightly stiffer and then one inch spacer from right. Anderson Design Fab. Okay. And it honestly wasn't too hard. I lifted it back in 2017 or 18. And so the, there are plenty of kits to find. You got Ready Lift, you got um, Anderson, uh, Rally Innovations. There's quite a few companies that make lifts for these cars. And how do you um, like the way that it rides with the lift? Is it any softer, or stiffer? Do you notice so, a big difference? Uh, Really, it's about the same. I mean, the, the stiffer springs do make it a little bit more bouncy. So going right. through corners at you know higher speed is a little bit more sketchy, but it still handles really well. Okay. It's super impressive, honestly. So it's not, not dramatically different from, from how no, it was no, no. before. It's, uh, it's pretty much about the same, yeah. So what kind of trails do you usually take it on? Because I, I know you mentioned you do some off-roading and I definitely see a couple of Yeah, I don't marks. look too close. She's got a couple dings and dents, but my favorite around here is definitely either Switzerland Trail, which is just right past Ned, super easy, um, or Rollins Pass. That one gets closed down in the winter and is kind of scary. But out in Moab, I love Onion Creek, such a fun trail. Uh, Potash is really beautiful. It's not the most extreme off-roader. You know, For I can't sure. rock crawl, it's no Jeep. But, um, but it's a know, good all-wheel drive system. The nice thing about it too is that it's a lightweight vehicle, weighs a little mm -hmm. over 3,000 pounds. It's narrow, so you're not gonna worry about rubbing on trees, having tree branches take off all of your paint. Definitely. So you can fit it pretty much anywhere you wanna go. And I've also noticed up front, you've got some pretty cool modifications. Um, the first one that you see obviously is a tow hook and this light bar, and that's badass, but a little lower down, it's actually got a skid plate. Yes, sir. So how, again, how difficult is it to find parts like these, like this light bar, the tow hook, the skid plate? I'm assuming that's all made specifically for the Crosstrek? Um, yes and no. These plates are from Primitive Racing and they actually fit um, some generation of Forester and okay. maybe another car. Um, so they are made for a Crosstrek, but they also are made for some other stuff. And there's different plates you can get. Again, Rally Innovations makes one. Um, so there's different options out there depending on what look you're going for. I kind of wanted like that thin, sleek profile. Yeah. So primitive is, is what I went with. And then I noticed you've got some off-road lights. So right here on the top of the hood and then on the top of your roof rack. Uh, so combination of all these, you've got a good amount of lighting. Is this eight, eight off-road lights on the front of it? I have been asked once or twice at gas stations, hey man, do you have enough lights? And my answer is always, <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. I, I do actually. Yeah, I you can never have too many lights. On. Now something else I noticed uh, very early on when I started looking at this car are these right here, these quick disconnect bumper attachments. Now, if you look closely at this front bumper, you'll notice that the bottom of it is chopped. So you said you took about how much off the bottom of this bumper? Oh, uh, roughly three and a half to four inches. Okay, so a decent amount of extra 
ability to approach and not scrape your plastics because yeah three to four inches that's, oh yeah that's a good Definitely. amount and what you mentioned is that because the bottom of the bumper is chopped, these help hold it on just a little bit better, right? On the sides for sure, definitely, because there's uh, there's no longer any clips along the bottom of the bumper because they either broke or I took them out. Um, and so I just chopped the whole bottom off for, like you said, a better incline angle. Um, and they kind of help hold it on the sides. If I go through a water crossing, the sides might bow out. Um, and well, they just help keep it in place. Yeah, and like you said, they also look pretty cool. Yeah, they're pretty sweet, and honestly, they're super affordable. These things need to be replaced every, like, 6 to 12 months. Yeah, I see there's um, a little bit of cracking, but... But I got like a holding box off. of 16 of them for 8 bucks, so nice. they're easy to replace. <laughs> now, I want to go through all of what you've got on your roof rack here, because there's oh, sure. a good amount. So, walk me through what all you've fitted. So, first of all, we'll start with uh, the Rhino Rack Backbone, which is currently a prototype. Uh, in production for release on cross treks very soon. Hopefully they'll get into Outbacks and other stuff. Um, but that has a Pioneer tray sitting on top of it, which is, if I'm not mistaken, a 48 uh, inches wide by 60 inches long okay. Pioneer tray. Uh, up on top, we have a Rhino Rack Sunseeker uh, six foot awning, and then two Rotopacks, two gallons of gas, two gallons of water, um, a full size spare, and then um, normally I have traction boards up there, but recently I went skiing and I thought I'd just leave the racks on for the video. So another thing that you mentioned is that you also tow a little Overland trailer with this car. Run about how much does that trailer weigh and how does this do with towing it? So towing capacity of a Crosstrek is 1,500. Uh, trailer clocks in right about 1,200 pounds. Okay. So it's, it's a beefy uh, five by eight foot trailer. It does okay. Up at elevation, I don't really want to talk about going up hills. <laughs> I had uh, four homies in the car with the trailer and a bunch of gear, and we topped out going 35 miles an hour up some hills, Ooh, way up by rough. Red Feather Lakes. It was it was sad, <laughs> um, but I mean, it got up the hill. It made it. We got to the campsite. We had a great time. It's just it's slow, you know. Yeah. It's slow, but she go, which is. Yeah, so I think the numbers the uh, in 2014 were 148 horsepower and 145 pound-feet of torque. So, yeah, definitely not an overly powerful car, but at the same time, when you have an off-roader, I would pick small size and low power over a large vehicle with a lot of power mm -hmm. if those are your only two options because a large vehicle is such a liability on the trail and you really don't need tons of power to get to where you're going if you're off-roading. For sure. It's uh, it's tougher up at higher elevations just because there's less air for this naturally aspirated engine. Um, but at the same time, I mean, if I'm only going five miles an hour up a trail, it doesn't really matter. You know? Exactly. It's all, it's all the same as long as I get there. Sweet. Well, let's check out some of the bits that are on the interior. Is this just general tools, first aid kit? So, yeah, that's a Molly backseat organizer. Uh, give me just a second here. It's got um, a lug for my lug nuts, wrench, pens, zip ties, oh, screwdrivers, zip got ties. some uh, utensils, hand warmers, flashlight, got a little uh, hatchet, and uh, in here I have some road flares and like a camping plate. Um, okay. And then in here there's just some gauze and some supplies for my diabetes and first aid kit. Uh, nice. Fire extinguisher and gloves, yeah. Yeah, and then in the front I see you've got some extra red trim pieces are so, these like adhesive add-ons or how do you do these uh so they they used to be wrapped uh but it started peeling up in here so uh i just pulled the pieces out these ones are super easy to get to this you just pull this boot back lift this up and then you can take this piece off and pull this whole center okay. console piece out and so i just spray painted them so I want to ask you what your favorite things about this car have been and what your least favorite things have been because you said you bought it around 40,000 miles and it's around 100 now. Mm -hmm. So you've had it long enough to kind of know what, what are the pros and what are the cons. For sure. So I've had this car right about a little over four years now uh, and every day is a dream with it. I love it. Uh, if I had to pick my favorite thing, honestly, it would probably be like either the look or the good gas mileage that it gets. It's not a guzzler. But downside, and this is pretty much the only downside I've ever heard from Crosstrek owners, is power. Right. It's the only thing that that's, sucks about them is it's got 148 horsepower at sea level. Like we're living up here, 
5280, <laughs> like who knows? Doesn't make it any easier. I haven't dynoed it, but I would guess with uh, the remap I've got, and well, I no longer have the exhaust, but it would have probably been about 140. Right. Up here. Yeah. Which is not great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so something that you mentioned uh, is that you have some big plans for this, especially on the power front in the future. Oh, for sure. I mean, this was my very first car, so it's got sentimental value to me. Like, I, I don't ever want to get rid of this. Um, so my plan would be to put an FA24 DIT in there because I've seen Crawford did it and with bolt-ons and a tune they made 500 wheel which is more than I'd ever need in this car. Right and um, that, that's the that's the power plant from the Subaru Ascent right? Yeah the big one. So it should be able hopefully to adapt to this car a little bit easier because that's a flat six? Uh, no it's a 2.4 liter direct okay. injection turbo. I haven't done too much research on it because I'm still in college like I'm not gonna be able to do this for a few years. Right. <laughs> and I want to get the life out of this motor that it came with. Uh, and hopefully the tranny as well. It is a CVT, which I've heard some kind of, you know, iffy things on, but I haven't had any issue with it yet. I love the paddle shifters because in traffic, I can just go into drive, but then when I want to go canyon carving, I can do, you know, some, uh, a little bit of some fake shifting action, as people yeah. would say, but <laughs> no, nah, it's still so much fun. Nice. Well, we really appreciate you bringing it by and hopefully at some point, if you're able to get a bigger Subaru Ascent motor in there, and tune it up. We want you to bring it back by because that would be wicked cool. Oh, for sure. Thanks so much for having me. I mean, I appreciate the opportunity to come out here and talk about this thing. So maybe other people will decide, oh, maybe I should or shouldn't get one. Um, because like I said, the downside is power, but there's so many other ups to this car. Uh, grocery getting is like the best thing you could do with this because you never have to worry about reliability. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a great car, so I've had a great time out here, so thank you. Yeah, and it is really difficult to find an off-roader that's also good with fuel, so it's a pretty cool opportunity right there. Anyways, that's all for this video. Be sure to go back to TFL Car for more news, views, and real-world reviews, and we'll see you in the next one.